Hi, I'm going to um, discuss the construction of sexuality in uh, modern Iran in this video. So I'll begin with um, the Qajars who ruled Iran from 1794 to 1925. Um, and at the, in this time period, they entered many economic arrangements with European um, states, a process through which Iran largely lost its economic independence. Along with the exchange of um, goods and ideas, gradually over the course of the 19th century, interaction with Europeans um, engendered certain changes concerning gender and sexuality as well. Europeans were, for example, scandalized by and wrote extensively about the extent of male homosexuality in Iran which by now had become defined as um, a perverse practice um, in much of Europe. Iranians, for their part, were astonished at the public display of um, European women's bodies and the institutionalized monogamy of the West. Some Iranian men viewed the clean-shaven European men who wore tight-fitting clothes as amrats, for example, despite their age. Um, and although they eventually realized that um, the fact that the Europeans were intensely um, homophobic themselves. The increasing dominance of um, European-influenced notions of modernity considerably changed the dominant um, sexual ideology in the country. So the comparatively open display of um, heterosexual affection in um, European public spaces and the Europeans' abhorrence of the public manifestation of same-sex attraction brought about new national debates and widespread discussions of, uh, between Iranians on gender and sexuality. Both in Iran and in the region, some intellectuals, um, without questioning patriarchy itself per se, began viewing women's education and um, more equitable family structures as the key sources of European advancement and began advocating for a more uh, woman-friendly social system. In these debates, heterosociability was presented as the norm and both homosexuality and polygamy were constructed as um, perverted backwards um, traditions that also um, that had also um, to be pushed to the margins and be eradicated. Now, Iranian diaspora newspapers in um, London, Istanbul, Bombay, and other cities began to advocate for women's education and other um, gender reforms, including monogamy and mandatory heterosexuality. Intellectuals inside of the country also launched um, debates among other enlightened um, segments of the population. And this public debate struck a chord um, amidst the increasing soul searching by Iranians who sought to analyze the reasons behind Iran's loss of autonomy to European powers. Now, in this context, Iran saw a modest gradual expansion in education for women and the appearance of men and women together in the public became more fashionable um, among the elites and the educated strata of the uh, society. Um, the introduction of this type of modernity to urban, upper, and middle class um, populations also had a broader impact on, um, on in terms of women's education and involvement in political matters. And women began to um, actively participate in national debates around gender and family law reform and in politics too. So gradually, ima the imagining of a different society widened uh, among urban social groups. This led to women uh, playing a significant part in successful nationwide street protests, for example, 
1887 against the tobacco monopoly uh, granted to the British um, companies by the Shah. Women um, marched um, in these protests and um, were among those who were uh, also killed in the protests. Now, this, um, this not only politicized more women to participate um, in national debates and activism for change, it also legitimized their presence in constitutional reformist um, circles, and women began to organize their own associations, primarily around uh, nationalist causes and demands for the introduction of a democratic um, constitution. So this burgeoning political um, consciousness and activism led to successful constitutional revolution in 1906 to 1911, which was a turning point in the life of the nation, particularly for women um, and for gender um, relations. Um, although <coughs> conservative religious um, ulama had formed a co coalition and uh, with the modernist and nationalist um, and um, intellectuals and successfully managed to deny women's political rights in the name of religion, women continued to um, agitate for reform and for the expansion of women's education, which they saw as um, key to their, um, their emancipation and to end uh, women's um, relegation to the private spheres and their valuation solely as um, mothers in the um, domestic spheres and spaces. So recognizing that the, um, the um, raising of awareness and questioning the status quo was uh, where the prerequisites to changing gender um, relations, women organized um, a, to open schools for girls, hospitals for women, and remained active in um, national political debates. These activities were um, crucial in shaping um, a context in which a uh, wider number of women could formulate uh, political demands for education, marriage reform, and political participation, and push them um, onto the national agenda. Now, women launched publications um, showcasing women's rights issues, including Danish in 1910, Zabon Zanon in 1919, Alam and Nesfan in 1920, and they also contributed to various modernist newspapers and publications. There were also various organizations and societies for women um, and um, they both, uh, both before and after the constitutional revolution, including um, the Women's Freedom Society in 1906, the National Ladies Society in 1910, Jamiat Nesvan Batan Khahe Iran, translated as Patriarch Patriotic Women's League of Iran in 1922, Jamiat Peke Saudat Neswan in 1927. So the main thrust of most of these publications and organizations was to raise women's awareness and um, the establishment of the um, modernist monarchy under um, Reza Pahlavi, um, the, was the dawn of a new era for women's activists and they were increasingly co-opted into um, the state structure where they would more effectively promote women's um, education and gender reforms from within the um, system. Now, the, the new regime's preoccupation with uh, modernizing the country included a gender ideology which profoundly impacted on the creation of modern Iranian um, womanhood. So um, let's talk about the Pahlavi era and um, gender relations and construction of the um, sexuality in this time. Pahlavi's policies in this arena focused on the promotion of heterosexuality as the only acceptable form of sexuality, 
and the ending of the gender segregation and female seclusion through women's education, their integration into the um, workforce and the policies around devailing. So following other states, modernist states in the region, such as um, Turkey especially, the new regime um, under Reza Shah introduced a national dress code in 1929, according to which men and women were expected to wear um, Western style clothing. In 1936, um, Pahlavi um, regime, the Reza Shah issued a police enforced ban on veiling in public and offered um, state employment to and educational opportunities for urban women uh, willing to abandon their um, veils. However, while the regime aimed to promote uh, a modern way of life supposedly modeled on the West, it did not introduce any reforms to the prevailing uh, polygamous structure of marriage, for example, in Iran. Um, so there were certain um, areas or certain um, things in the society that the Pahlavi regime did not attend to, one of which was the polygamy. The state's modernization agenda lacked support um, from significant sections of the population, including conservative um, um, sects of the society, the religious groups, um, and while initial opposition centered on women's education, the most um, controversial reform was basically the um, devailing of the women. And this um, alienated, alienated the, a larger segment of the society in urban uh, populations, including many women from diverse um, social classes and class backgrounds who believed in veiling, um, actually. So among these um, different social classes and so strata, um, there were families, um, the families of young girls um, from the more traditional part of the society with um, conservative backgrounds, regardless of their economic class, generally did not permit their um, daughters to attend modern schools beyond the primary um, level and continue to observe the veil even if um, in its less restricted form. Um, the age of marriage among the um, this demographic um, also remained low, often before or at the onset of puberty. While some groups um, softened their attitudes towards their education, um, the girls' education, um, there remained a major gap between modernist sectors of society and the more religious and conservative sectors. Uh, with a small population in the middle which supported uh, a more um, Iranian culturally based notions of um, modernization and gender reform. Like um, the reforms um, beginning or um, from within the Iranian culture itself. Um, so whereas pre 19th um, century sexual and gender norms were primarily defined by the standards um, set by community and socio-religious institutions. During the Pahlavi era, um, we have the beginning of a period where um, we have state intervention uh, and to which many, um, uh, many different um, people from populations from various backgrounds um, opposed. A number of factors ranging from the um, you know, unveiling of women, their increased presence in the public space, um, partly motivated by more wide, widespread acceptability of education for women and the encouragement of um, normative heterosociability, disrupted the male homosocial spaces. Um, Tehran University, which had opened in 1934, admitted um, the first 12 um, women female cohort in 1936. 
Um, the historian, the earliest historian of Iran, bad, of women's movements, Badrol Moluk Bamdad, for example, documents that although girls, um, and I'm quoting her, had deliberately and uh, prudently prepared themselves for entry, the boys were completely disconcerted. For most of them, mixing with girls was something unforeseen, end quote. So even um, she documents that even male professors were, um, were uncomfortable with the presence of women in the um, university and in the public spaces, and they avoided looking into girls' eyes, eyes while answering their academic questions. With um, time, the removal of the strict segregation of the sexes and women's increased presence in public um, gave women um, the, and also men the opportunity to see and um, socialize and basically mingle with each other before marriage, even if under the strict supervision of their families. Um, it gradually became acceptable for young uh, men and women to have um, some degree of choice and some, some voice and say in their selection of future husbands or um, wives. Now, these reforms have um, some impact on the uh, prevailing patriarchal culture by giving a little more space to women and by limiting the power of fathers and, um, and um, guardians um, over women. But in the family sphere, women's status was relative, relatively unaffected. Um, while, for example, a reform was introduced raising the minimum age of marriage um, to, from 15 to 18, to 15 for girls and 18 for boys, in practice, overall gender relations within the family structure um, remained um, unequal between men and women and the boys and the girls, and women remained subjects of their husbands uh, or their fathers or, or alternatively their guardians. Now, many women activists therefore viewed um, the, the, this equitable family structure as the um, as the foundation of their activism and they devoted their um, time and energy to raising awareness and consciousness above all um, about the family law um, reform. So although the modernist um, regime advocated um, active participation of women in society, it, it did not uh, promote or appreciate democracy um, or citizen-led initiatives and um, ensure that gender um, reforms and ch changes and all these um, de democratic initiatives are decreed by the state alone. For instance, in 1932, the Patriotic Women's League, um, uh, one of the women's uh, associations, sponsored the Oriental Women's Congress in Tehran, which called for changes in women's rights to vote, compulsory education for girls, equal pay at work, abolition of polygamy, um, and uh, improvement of men's morals, and of course, education for adult women. Now, immediately after the Congress, in an attempt to homogenize women's organizations and co-opt their aspirations, Reza Shah, um, Reza Shah closed, uh, closed down um, the Patriotic Women's League along with other women's organizations and formed a new government controlled and sponsored ladies center, Kanune Banuan, led by his own daughter, Princess Shams. So whether they worked within, from within the um, state structure or independently, however, it doesn't matter. Women remained uh, focused on the reform of family law and women's rights, um, especially women's political rights um, and um, within the family, and both of which were subject to much resistance um, by from the conservatives um, and conservative social forces um, led by religious clerics.
So finally, more than 50 years after the success of the constitutional revolution, um, women's sustained efforts resulted in the 1963 all male um, nationwide referendum, which granted women political rights, including the right to vote and to stand for election. In the following um, election, six women entered the lower house of the parliament and two were appointed to the Senate. After this success, all um, energies were focused on the family law. After many years of intensive lobbying in 1967, um, a mild reform uh, on the, to the family protection law um, was finally introduced where the unilateral right of, the, uh, of men to divorce was curbed. Now, the divorce um, had to be registered through the family court and the right to polygamy um, became subject to um, the agreement of the first, or first wife or the family court. Now, um, within the divorce, the custody of the children, which had automatically um, gone to the father after the in initial period of the infancy was not decided at the discretion of the court with the best interests of the children um, in mind. The law was um, also um, revised one more time in 1973 to improve um, its provisions, increasing the age of marriage from, uh, to 18 for women, um, which was 15 before. So although gender reforms in Iran are often presented as a matter of state intervention and an examination of the history of political movements makes it clear that it was women's awareness of their rights, their collective efforts in consciousness raising and their assertiveness that gave the regime its power to address and reformulate gender discourses. Now, the, the combined impact of these reforms and of women's increased political visibility in the 1960s led to the emergence of a new generation of assertive women with confidence and firm belief in their equality with men and as citizens. They were more outspoken about their sexuality and their right to sexual freedom um, and sexual pleasure. And the, the examples of these women breaking sexual taboos can be found in the poetry of, for example, Farooq Farooqzad. This new generation of urban, educated, politically savvy women um, identified with Farooqzad's sexually provocative poems, uh, which became the subject of many debates in intellectual circles. However, Farooq's fame and um, considerable popularity uh, among the large number of young women who followed her um, example was an indication of an emerging consciousness, um, which even if it was not articula articulated as such by its uh, pioneers can be viewed as the Iranian second wave um, of feminism that moved beyond women's legal rights uh, alone and incorporated the notion of the individual right to, uh, to um, love and sexual uh, pressure, ple pleasure. Hi, right, so in this video, I will talk about um, the construction or redefinition of Iranian womanhood and uh, female sexuality under the Islamic Republic. So, whereas modernity and social changes between um, 1900 and 1979 established heterosociability and heterosexuality um, as um, social norms, um, the Islamic Republic has aimed to rebuild a gender apartheid society through the introduction of dress code, segregation of public spaces, and more importantly, canceling the modest reforms to family protection law, which Iranian women had um, secured after decades of struggle. Now, the Islamic regime um, also promoted the unilateral uh, male heterosexual autonomy, 
um, supporting and even promoting polygamy, making the wars once again um, a mere unilateral right for uh, men and allowing men to contract unlimited temporary marriages. At the same time, they criminal criminalized both um, consensual sexual relations outside of marriage and homosexual relations with severe punishments, including stoning and execution. Now, they put in considerable resources um, organizing moral police forces whose mission was um, to reinforce all of these new laws and um, reforms. Many women um, outside the conser conservative religious social milieu um, who had supported the revolution initially were um, stunned to find um, themselves in a uh, worse situation than before. So when Ayatollah Khamenei, for instance, announced compulsory veiling on March 7, 1979, women showed their resistance through a spontaneous de uh, and dramatic um, demonstration on March 8, um, 1979, incidentally, the International Women's Day and um, normally not a day of um, any significance in Iran. While this um, demonstration slowed down the implementation of compulsory veiling and opened space for some um, critical analysis, the regime nonetheless continued to uh, its plans and implemented gender segregation. In fact, um, this, um, this show of force and um, criticism of the revolutionary regime heightened hostility towards feminists and secular women in general, as well as towards the many uh, Muslim women activists who continue to um, hold, for example, visions of democratic Muslim society and um, set in motion the process of um, the marginalization of all this uh, population um, and um, exposing them to increased public harassment. Now, conversely, religious and traditional women who supported um, the conservative ideologies of the state were encouraged to be socially and politically active an opportunity they um, lacked prior to the um, revolution. And um, due to, fam for example, in the Pahlavi era, due to family restrictions and their own probably religious uh, beliefs. With the regime claiming Islam as the principal guiding force driving their policies, these conservative families and um, communities, lo communities lost some of the, um, the legitimacy to, um, to limit women's um, involvement and freedom in the um, public and national uh, spheres and movements. So since the Islamic State's um, rhetoric decreed social and political action as um, serving Islam. Now, the highly politicized Islam promoted by the regime became a means to resist Western modernization and um, whatever um, was the agenda of the Pahlavi uh, kings. Um, and the young conservatives became the agent, agents of these, uh, the implementations of these laws and reforms. The opening of the political and social arena to conservative um, women had many unintended consequences, however, for the regime attempting to recreate um, an imaginary Islamic society based on gender segregation and women's place in the home. Now, young Islamist women, the more conservative ones, began demanding their rights to higher education. They became um, active in organizations, joined the literacy, health, or reconstruction programs enlisted in the Basij, um, uh, the militia set up to protect the principles of the revolution, supported the war effort, 
and even began choosing their husbands through these networks rather than uh, complying with arranged marriages. Some even entered the battlefield in various capacities during the Iran-Iraq war from 1980 to 1988. Now, these unconventional roles, to some extent, allowed conservative women to assert their equality with men and provided them with the personal and financial autonomy that the liberal uh, Pahlavi regime had failed to do um, so to offer them. As the regime's gender policies unfolded throughout the next decade, the decade of 1980s, um, many women who had initially supported the regime uh, became disillusioned and questioned the legitimacy of certain policies presented in the name of religion. With more and more women e being educated and in especially religious matters and re-examining the religious texts, um, more women-centered interpretations of the Quran emerged. Now, this process was assisted by the critical and rights-based writings of the secular women, especially prominent lawyers such as Mehrangis Kar and Shirin Ebadi, who although um, apparent adversaries of these conservative women, articulating gender equality through a secular framework, they shared largely similar demands from, um, demands, uh, from the regime with um, the conservative women. In particular, they shared demands um, for the reform of the family law, which for all um, practical purposes had legally reduced women to subjects of their husbands and denied them full citizenship rights. As a result of these collaborations and um, you know, public um, discourses, a generation of religious reformers that included certain prominent also male leaders emerged, which began interpreting the religious texts in a more woman-friendly and less sexist manners. In this process, um, the question of sexuality grew increasingly politicized in Iran. By the 1990s and 2000s, for example, young people who are called the children of the Islamic uh, Republic by Yaqmoyan and whom uh, Varzi considers the target of the Islamization project had created new opportunities to express themselves and their sexuality in ways that contradicted the uh, regime's teachings. Now they adopted Western style um, of dressing, clothing, and adopted new lifestyles based on watching, for example, MTV, listening to Pink Floyd, or reading um, Neruda. And um, you know, despite all um, the continual arrests and punishments by moral um, police and the harassments in public spaces. Um, young women particularly, but uh, also generally all um, youth, questioned um, cons compulsory veiling and challenged the regime um, daily by wearing unconventional hijab, tight and colorful mantos and makeup as they stroll up and down busy streets and in public cafes. Now, in today's Iran, the youth um, particularly secular middle-class urbanites, engage in activities they risk, um, they, um, they risk um, their lives, they risk sanctions, hanging out with friends in the, uh, and opposite sex friends in the public, um, looking for potential partners on the streets, attending Western um, style mixed gender parties, um, and engaging in non-marital sexual relations. Now, they essentially reject the, um, the regime's stigmatization of homosexuality and argue for the right to consen consensual adult sex, despite awareness of the ramification of their social behavior and the threat of the state punishment. 
Now, Pardis Mahdavi in her book, Passionate Uprisings, documents the various um, ways that these young Iranian men and women, mostly urban middle class and university educated ones, use their bodies and sexualities as a major means to challenge the repressive policies of the Islamic regime in everyday life. Through, um, through all of this, the youth are undoubtedly motivated in part by enjoyment, and, um, but, they're, but at the same time, their um, behavior is equally an expression of um, political opposition to the regime and voicing um, explicitly voicing their uh, agency over their sexuality. To a social observer, these changes are an indication of a sexual and social revolution happening in Iran. While all of these um, forms of resistance might be individualized forms um, when simultaneously adopted by large numbers of the youth, they become major manifestations of resistance and challenges to the regime around its gender vision and sexual ideology. However, besides these individualized forms of defiance, there also exists formal and organized resistance. For instance, the Stop Stoning Forever campaign um, launched by young women activists inside Iran continues to create international embarrassment for the regime calling attention to its brutal and unjustifiable use of stoning as a means of execution for alleged sexual offenses. Similarly, the One Million Signatures campaign is another effort to draw attention um, and huge numbers of supporters from many towns and cities and from both rural and urban population. This campaign's primary demands are um, revisions of Iranian constitution to remove all discrimination um, against women and reforms to the family law to make marriage a partnership between two equals with women um, granted the same rights and control over their bodies as men. Women now expect more intimacy and greater emotional and sexual closeness in their marriages which is no longer um, seen as merely for procreation. The debates around sexual orientation and homosexuality have um, also never been um, as so widespread in the country, at least since the um, second half of the 20th century. The focus is not on the sexual rights of consenting adults, regardless of whether the relationships are um, hetero or homosexual. The virtual world continues to um, contribute to all these discourses and discussions of sexuality, sexual rights, freedoms, and sexual pleasures. Cyberspace um, is a venue where the regime's ideological and pseudoscientific um, stance that men have greater sexual needs, for example, um, than women, is also being challenged and um, sometimes even ridiculed. Secret gay subcultures um, also have emerged and there, there have been in, specifically in urban centers and some have cyberspace publications and online forums in Persian and translations in English. So the legal recognition of homosexuality by the state is one of the topics that they address. And um, there are several underground organizations in support of the freedom of sexual orientation inside and outside of the um, country, creating um, transnational links between um, the national and the global. 